The council meeting will please come to order if you would rise and give your attention to Deputy Mayor Killer for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to introduce Marjorie Van Buren. Marjorie is a member of the Topeka Friends Meeting. And um, the Friends began meeting together here in, um, in 1982 in Topeka, first in Homes. Uh, they moved in about 1992 to the meeting house on Southwest 8th Street, not far from here, which at the time, uh, it's at 8th and Tyler, and it was once the home of famous jacks, jazz saxophonist Coleman Hawkins. They actually sponsored the Hawk Coleman Hawkins Festival for its first couple of years right there on Tyler Street at 8th Street. Um, so with that, Marjorie will explain a little bit about how the Friends do their faith and lead us. Thank you. Our uh, manner of worship is in silent waiting. And we, a, a common belief that is shared by Quakers is that there is that of the divine in every person and that every person has direct access to that grace, wisdom, light. Uh, so we, we would begin a meeting like this with a few moments of silence. So may, in that spirit, may we have a few moments of silence. Thank you, friends. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have one proclamation this evening. Joining me is Glenda Washington, who is Vice President for Entrepreneur and Minority Business Development of Go Topeka. Uh, in May is always Small Business Week, but in Topeka we're doing something special this year. We're, do we're doing two weeks. So we'll have a proclamation and then we'll have Glenda explain a bit about, uh, about the, the activities. Whereas since 1963, the United States has recognized the vital contributions that entrepreneurs and small business have made to our nation, and whereas small business is a driving force behind new products, innovation, and job creation in this country, and whereas Topeka and Shawnee County was built on the dreams of small businesses and entrepreneurs who had the courage to chart their own paths, and whereas Topeka continues to create a climate that welcomes the imaginative talent of entrepreneurs by providing the necessary resources for the growth of our entrepreneur ecosystem. And whereas during the period of May 1 to 14, 2015, the community, shall the community will celebrate Small Business Week with events and activities throughout Topeka and Shawnee County. And now therefore I, Larry Walgas, Mayor of the City, do hereby proclaim May 1 to 14, 2015, as Small Business Weeks, and urge all citizens to acknowledge and celebrate the contributions and achievements of our small businesses. Now you tell us about some activities. First of all, I want to just share with you the number of small businesses in the room. If you just stand for a second, if you don't mind. Yes, thank you.
Thank you. And as the mayor said, we are really celebrating two weeks. Across the country, they're celebrating this week only as Small Business Week. But we decided that in Topeka, we would kick it up a notch. We decided that our small business were, businesses were extremely important to, to us. And so what we're doing is we're celebrating two weeks of small business celebration. So we'll fi you'll find us all across the community. We're doing something called Cash Mobs. Right now, we have a group of people over at uh, College Hill Pizza Pub mobbing that uh, <laughs> That, that pub and spending money there. Tomorrow we'll be at Jess and, and Rosie's. So, uh, and then there's a whole nother week of things that we're doing. Um, we will also be having workshops across the community and then next week on the 14th, March 14th at 12 o'clock at um, May. May 14th. I'm thinking about my birthday, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm so, important. so May 14th over at uh, Capitol Plaza we will be celebrating the winners of the, the nominees and the winners of the Small Business Awards. So uh, we invite you to come over May 14th at 12 o'clock. If you haven't made your reservations, please do so at this time. We're about at 320. So come help us celebrate the small businesses in our community. Thank you so much. Thank you, There are no presentations this evening, so we will proceed with the roll call. Mayor Wilgas? Here. Council Member Siller? Here. Clear? Here. Ortiz? Here. Shum? Here. De La Isla? Here. Jensen? Here. Schwartz? Here. Cohen? Here. And Harmon? Here. Council Members, there are no additions or deletions to the agenda this evening. Uh, however, there will be one uh, executive session on the workers' comp issue. And then we will proceed with the consent agenda if the clerk would read. A is a resolution introduced by Council Member Sandra Clear granting Call Valley Bank an exception to the provisions of City of Topeka Code Section 945-170 concerning no noise prohibitions. B is a resolution introduced by Deputy Mayor Karen Hiller granting the, loft the lofts at College Hill an exception to the provisions of City of Topeka Code Section 945-170 concerning noise prohibitions. C, our minutes of the regular meeting of April 21, 2015, and there are two open after midnight license applications and staff is resting, requesting approval. That is the consent agenda. Your pleasure. Councilwoman DeLisla moves to approve. Uh, Councilman Jensen seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor vote yes. Opposed vote no. I vote yes. We have 10 yes. 10, having voted yes, the uh, consent agenda is approved as read. We'll proceed with the action items A, a real estate disposal. A is approval of real estate report and method of disposal for rural property located at 13th and Kansas Avenue. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Stiles to step forward and uh, present this item and answer any questions you may have. Okay. Ms. Stiles. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, governing body members, good evening. This evening, um, the Department of Neighborhood Relations brings to you a request to um, sell some surplus property. As you saw in the real estate report, these are commercially zoned lots that don't fit into our programs under housing services. No other um, departments within the city have indicated interest, and so we bring to you the request to request proposals from the public for sealed bids on the property. Okay, are there questions for Ms. Stiles? Seeing none, thank you. Discussion pleasure, Ms. Siller. Well, that is in my district and I appreciate the staff's work on this. I move to approve the real estate report and dispose of the property by competitive bid. Uh, Councilman Schwartz seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor vote yes. Opposed vote no. I vote yes. We have 10 yes. 10 having voted yes, the report disposal is approved. Item uh, 5B is a charter ordinance. B is a charter ordinance introduced by City Manager Jim Colson amending City of Topeka Code Section A92 and repealing said original section concerning the Topeka Metropolitan Transit Authority. 
Mr. City Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask uh, uh, Susan Duffy and Rod Miller from TMTA to step forward uh, to provide information about the action this evening and to be available to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hello, members of the um, City Council. I'm Rod Miller. Susan Duffy, the General Manager of the Transit Authority, is with me along with Chip Falding in the back, who's our Chief Financial Officer. Uh, we've provided you, I think, with a, a packet tonight. Uh, we've been here the, over the last couple of months with Bike Share and uh, with an update for last year. This is an update on the left hand side of what we've done since we were here last, uh, highlighting maybe Bike Share, some of the route changes we made over the last couple of weeks to the uh, North Topeka and Oakland routes uh, to improve service and add service on Saturdays. If you have questions about those during this, you can ask us those. But I thought that since you have quite a full agenda, that we'd try to get to get past this as quick as possible. Uh, we also have in the uh, packet uh, little uh, bookmarks that we hand out during the summer to uh, children who ride or students who ride the buses free. Last year we gave or had 48,000 students ride the bus during the uh, summer. Uh, the highest year, uh, ridership we had prior to that was only 11,000 students during the summer. So quite an in in impact uh, during the summer getting kids to and from camps to the library and other uh, venues throughout the city. Also a little card uh, highlighting our, our, our bicycle sharing program. We have uh, so far uh, 528 members. Uh, every bicycle gets ridden every day so far of our 100 bicycles. So we were hoping to have 1,000 members within the first six months. We're already better than halfway in less than three weeks. So we're very excited about how well that's working. Also on the right side, we have a couple other highlights for you. You know, 1.2 million rides last year. Um, you know, 34,000 rides so far this year just to Washburn students. So lots of uh, folks riding the bus, lots of folks using our system. The reason we're here tonight is because with our charter order it allows us three mills. We, since 2011, have been, uh, have received 4.2 mills to operate. If you look at the budget, which is the very last page on the uh, right-hand side, our budget so far, preliminary budget is roughly $175,000, less than, less than last year. Uh, all we're asking for is a cap. We can always come in less than that, but uh, that, that's really what we're asking for. Thank you. I think this is an excellent presentation. I particularly like the, the update with all of the, the routes that are, that are listed in here. Councilman Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think this is... Um, you guys are doing an awesome job. To let the kids ride free to get to work is awesome. To let people get on the bikes to ride across town to get to work and back home is awesome. Um, I, I just like to commend you guys for thinking outside of the box because you guys are really outside of the box. You've hit a home run. I can't say enough good things about it. This month is elderly ride free. Uh, there's a, you guys have the proper name for it, but I know. Seniors Ride Free. Seniors Ride Free. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to mess it up, but, you know, that's awesome. I work with um, a lot of the low to moderate income people, and I had one of the elderly tell me, I will be able to take that $50, correct, mm -hmm. that she gets every month and get do something different. And she was going to buy her a pair of shoes mm -hmm. this month because she didn't have to get her bus pass to take her to and from the store and get her medicine. So continue to do what you're doing. Keep me a bike out there somewhere. Yes. They ride good and that's awesome that we're at 500 and some. Um, I'm gonna um, make a motion to approve, Mr. Mayor, but I just wanna say I appreciate what you guys have done. Thank you, Mr. Okay, we have a motion to approve the charter ordinance. Councilman Dilley East was seconds. I think that's, thank you. I, there, if there are no other questions, do you have other comments you wish to make? Um, just one, with our system update, we will be everywhere this summer educating folks on the changes in the routes and the simplified numbering system and colors. We will not be doing the loops. We'll go in and back out on the same street. Um, Camp Metro's in effect. We will have our camp counselors 
at camps, faith-based, county, you name it, we're going to be there. We're going to be trailing the bookmobile. We're going to be at Dillon's. We're going to be at Walgreens. We need to educate folks. We are at Cinco de Mayo, uh, a Mayo at the East Topeka <laughs> Center today, helping them celebrate the Senior Center. But um, we will be everywhere because we need to be to educate folks about the changes that will happen on August 1. We're excited about these. We think it will be a much improved, modernized system. We're thrilled about the flex wrap, the first one that's being offered here. So we're, we want to um, use this time to eliminate everybody's stress about the changes and talk about the positive things that will be happening. And we're, we're thrilled to provide this service and hope to see you all on the bus as well and let me know or um, the board how we can assist your folks in your district. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. We have a motion and second on the charter ordinance. Uh, Councilman Shum. Mr. Mayor, when it's appropriate, I'd like to amend the ordinance to remove the words for 2016 from line 14. Okay, it has been moved um, in a, in a, an amendment. To actually, and I believe what that does, you want to describe sort of what what the purpose of the motion is? Certainly. The purpose of the motion. The purpose of the motion would be uh, really due to the diligence that the Topeka Metro has shown since 2011 to keep them from having to come back annually to ask for it to be raised to 4.2. It would leave the mill levy at 4.2. Okay. And I believe rapidly approaching is a copy of the proposed amendment. Is there a second? Councilman Jensen seconds. Is there um, discussion? Uh, Councilman Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chad, I motion. I made a motion. He made, he made a motion to amend it, but we didn't get a second to my motion. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. Councilwoman or um, a second. Oh, you yeah. did? No, okay. Have, okay, a, I'm sorry. I yeah. missed it. Thank we you. Did. Is there other discussion on the amendment? Most amendment. Councilwoman Hiller? Well, I, I can support it. Uh, we really held the line when they wanted to go to five back in 09 and said, no, you really need to look at your business practices and your routes and your riders and all those things, and they did. And they have really done a wonderful job since then and, um, and, and are leveraging those dollars well in services and in dollars. So I appreciate that amendment and the motion, and I'll support them both. Okay. Councilman Ortiz. Um, Attorney Sublet, can you um, tell the public what this will do? Because, you know, they haven't seen this or anything. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, Councilwoman. Essentially, this would remove the um, levy limit not to exceed three mills from the charter ordinance and replace it with 4.2 mills. Um, as was described since 2011, I believe you said, it's been set at 4.2 mills. So our charter ordinance would be able to catch up with where we're at in our process. So that it would always be at 4.2 instead of three um, every year as it come back. Is that describe it? Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I know this was discussed several years ago, and I know there was some thinking that, no, we need to have them come back every year and ask us for this. But I think the, the tenor of the motion is we see they're doing a fine job, and doesn't, it's sort of an exercise now we're going through every year. And rather than doing that, why don't we just change the charter and so it's permanent and it, we don't have to come, go through this process on a yearly basis. And other discussion? Uh, we are voting on the amendment to, um, to make it so this uh, is permanent. Um, all those in favor vote yes. Opposed vote no. I vote yes. We have 10 yes. 10 having voted yes. The amendment is approved. And now we will vote on the charter ordinance as amended. And this is a charter ordinance, um, so it, uh, there is a different vote total. Um, any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the charter amendment as as amended, uh, vote yes. Opposed, vote no. I vote yes. We have 10 yes. 10 having voted yes, the charter ordinance is approved as amended. Uh, we will proceed to item 
5C, a resolution on real estate. C is a resolution introduced by City Manager Jim Colson in accordance yeah. with Section 1860.010 of the T Topeka Municipal Code, approving a conditional use permit to allow for the remodeling and rebuilding of a legal non-conforming billboard on property currently zoned Z4 Commercial District and located at 1700 Southwest Topeka Boulevard in the City of Topeka, Kansas. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask Mr. Feyander, the Planning Director, to come forward and address this issue. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Your Honor, Council Members. Uh, as uh, was stated, uh, this proposal is at the southeast corner of 17th and Speaker Boulevard. As mentioned, there's an existing billboard that needs to be moved to, uh, to accommodate an expansion of the quick shop on the site. Um, the new billboard that will be the exact same size and the exact same height as the current one there. Uh, the only two differences in when they move it is it's going to be built on a monopole. Uh, which is required by code, as well as be moved back 20 feet from the front uh, property line. So that's another requirement. Uh, the applicant has agreed to all conditions, and uh, Planning Commission staff recommend approval, and we ask for a motion to approve the resolution tonight. Thank you. Are there questions for Mr. Feyender? Mr. Jensen? Will it be um, one of those illuminated billboards, the big screens, or is it just a regular standard billboard? Uh, Council Member Jensen, at this point, it's just a regular billboard. Thank you. No tracing lights or yeah. anything no, like no, that. No, no, no. It's, it's not going to blind people to death as they drive past. Yeah. No. That we joke because that isn't allowed for that type. You're of, correct. Yes. For that type of billboard. <laughs> Council Member Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is in my district, and I do approve this. I make a motion to approve. A motion to approve by Ms. Ortiz, Ms. Delis, for seconds, and Council Members, this is. Again, we're in a, this is a zoning issue, so it's treated differently in a sense. We're approving the action of the Planning Commission. Um, so that they had the public hearing. We don't have speakers. Uh, we're in that, so it's that matter. And also then our vote is slightly different. We have a motion to approve. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor vote yes. Opposed vote no. I vote yes. We have 10 yes. 10 having voted yes, the resolution is approved. Uh, <coughs> item 5D, resolution on um, investment pool. D is a resolution introduced by City Manager Jim Colson concerning the City of Topeka's participation in the State of Kansas Municipal Investment Pool and rescinding City of Topeka Resolution Number 8566. Mr. City Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to ask Mr. Gerber to address this. This and the next item are simple uh, um, house cleaning activities. But Mr. Gerber can explain specifically okay, Mr. what we're here. Mr. Mayor, Mr. City Manager, Council, thank you. Uh, as noted by the City Manager, these next two resolutions are housekeeping items. Because of a number of staff changes we've had over the last uh, month or so, we needed to update our contact forms and also our, our resolution on file with these particular entities. So. Your approval of both of the next two items would, would do that. And All right. So we would ask for your approval. Are there questions for Mr. Uh, Gerber? Seeing none, your, your pleasure. Ms. Ortiz? What are they? What, what amendments are they? What staff? So on, on item 5D, mm -hmm. uh, we've added our new chief accounting officer, Simon Martinez. We've also added our accountant to Amanda Meyer, and then we took off a um, staff member who, who left in the last month. Okay. And these people are authorized to handle the funds. Is that why that's the purpose of this, is that it gives approval to them to act on behalf of the city? Mr. Mayor, generally, yes, for the, for the investment pool, uh, for the... For item 5e, it pertains to signatures required on, on certain checks and documents. Okay, yes. Councilwoman Clear. So are we on just D now? Yes, this is D. Um, and can you just put this in layman terms? What does this mean? I mean, what what's the pool? What is this? <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilwoman Clear. Uh, the mun municipal investment pool is a... Um, service offered by the state of Kansas, whereby municipals are able to pool their monies and uh, by sort of this uh, larger investment pooling, we're able to get better rates. 
Uh, in Topeka's case, we have um, the, the funds vary depending on the time of month and the time of year, how much we have in there. For example, today we had approximately $20 million in, in this pool and we have, we get an overnight rate with our investment. So what, what typically happens is those funds are taken after business hours, they're swept is the parlance that's used. Uh, they're invested for a short period of time. So we earn a small interest rate on our money. It keeps our money working 24 hours a day. So it doesn't just sit in our checking account overnight and not earn. Um, Councilman Cohen. Um, are they safe investments, low interest rates? Uh, Mr. Cohen, Mr. Mayor, yes. The, and that's the intent of this is to be safe. And also they're of course highly liquid. And so it gives us flexibility to move our funds as we need to. Mm -hmm. About how many other communities are involved in this pool? Uh, Mr. Cohen and Mr. Mayor, it, it of course is going to vary, uh, but I think the last time I looked, there was over 300, just slightly over 300 communities. Okay. It's not just cities, it's also it's public entities, counties, <coughs> townships, mm -hmm. cemetery boards. Yeah. Thank you. Your pleasure. Councilman Ortiz. Councilman Ortiz. Thank you. Motion to approve D. We move to approve. Uh, Councilman Shum seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor vote yes. Opposed vote no. I vote yes. We have 10 yes. 10 having voted yes. The resolution is approved. Uh, item 5E, resolution on designating depositories. And I can go directly to Mr. Gerber. Is that bypassed? So no, can it's okay, I won't file a grievance. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. City Manager, thank you. Uh, as noted when I started item 5D, this I'm is... I'm sorry to interrupt. We did not have it read. <laughs> then we, by law, we have to have it read first by the City Clerk. Thank you. He is a resolution introduced by City Manager Jim Colson, naming banks and savings institutions that are designated as depositories for all City of Topeka accounts and authorizing signatories and rescinding city of Topeka resolution number 8565. Mr. Gerber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This resolution in front of you updates our signatures and also uh, reaffirms banks in the area that can serve as depositories for city of Topeka funds. And we would ask your approval on such item. And the list is complete in because any bank practically in the city of Topeka is included in this, isn't that correct? Mr. Mayor, yes. This, this is an item that is required to be updated on a yearly basis by state statute. Uh, and so typically the banks that are listed are ones that we could put our funds into. We typically don't. We typically have a primary bank that we use for our funds. Uh, in our case right now, that bank is US Bank as our primary funds. Although we've recent, recently transitioned to from core first to US Bank, so we do still have some remaining funds in our core first account. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Gerber? My pleasure. Mr. Jensen? Move to approve. He moves to approve, and Councilwoman Schwartz seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor, vote yes. Those vote no, I vote yes. We have 10 yes. 10 having voted yes, the uh, resolution is approved. Uh, going to item 5F, five e, five resolution on Hartman Park, the clerk would read. F is a resolution introduced by City Manager Jim Colson, authorizing the City Manager to continue with the process of implementing the amended Heartland Park Redevelopment Project Plan and the issuance of additional star bonds. Mr. City Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I would be uh, uh, lying if I didn't say that I had a heightened sense of anxiety today, but I think it's important to explain why. This has been a project that has been going on for a very long time. It started a long, long time ago, and it started with the specific intent of doing what was in the long-term best interest of the city, specifically to address a financial uh, challenge that existed in the city uh, from a debt service perspective, and also to, if possible, to re-energize a property that had been a valuable economic engine in this community for a very long time. 
certainly since then a lot of things have happened and I'm going back to 1988 a, a lot of things have happened that have had a a, a negative impact on that facility and its success and you can list those including significant impacts in the sanctioning bod number of sanctioning bodies and racing as itself a, a, a significant global recession uh, that occurred in 2008 that none of us hope to ever see again in, in our lifetimes and then just a lot of changes um, out at the track itself. But that's not the source of my anxiety. The source of my anxiety is taking actions that allow us as a community to get back focused on what we need to do. And there is life at the end of this. Whether it is approved or whether it's not approved, nothing changes for us. We continue to operate this city in the best interest of its citizens. So at this point, I'd just like to turn it over to Mr. Sublette and he can bring up to speed on certain things. And I, I say this with the highest level of sincerity. We want you to make the best decision that you possibly can, and we will go forward and carry it forward in the best interest of the citizens of this community. Mr. Sublet. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I'll just start with a brief explanation of the resolution that's in front of you that's been posted. Uh, essentially, this resolution would um, authorize the city manager to continue to move forward with the Heartland Park Redevelopment District in accordance with Ordinance 19915, which was passed August 12, 2014. And what that would allow to happen is the city manager to go to request from the Department of Commerce somewhere between 4.8 and 5.5 .5 million dollars in star bonds. And as I described back in August in, of 2014, I went back to watch the video because <coughs> it had been a while of the meeting. Um, the reason there's a range there is because with the different loans that are on the um, property um, and mortgages by Core First, by um, SBA by Department of Commerce, as with any loan, it continues to generate interest. And when we initially had these discussions back late summer, no, early summer, actually in June, um, we were in the $5 million, and what I said in the August meeting is, could be 5.2, could be 5.3, we don't know what it's going to be because we don't know the date of closing. So that's why there's that range of 4.8 to $5.5 .5 million. But approval of this would essentially um, authorize the city manager to continue to move forward with this project. Um, a couple things I wanted to address. Since we last met, we've had two public meetings that were very well attended. I thought we had, just my opinion, I, I thought we had really good engagement from the public, lots of good questions and lots of good discussion. Um, the NHRA, there's been discussions about the NHRA contract. And I believe a copy has been provided to the media and, uh, and all the council members and the mayor has a copy. We initially entered into a contingency contract, I believe it was July 24th of last summer with the NHRA. That contract was contingent on the city acquiring fee simple title to the property. Obviously that's not going to happen before the NHRA race. So we received a letter from them that essentially releases the city and NHRA from any obligations under that contract. There is no contract between the city and NHRA right now. However, NHRA has negotiated with the current operator to have this year's race. So this year's race will take place. And, um, you know, there's no commitment on paper to continue after this year, but um, NHRA has been a willing participant with Heartland Park and been in the city for some time. Um, the advantage that this document gives us and this letter gives us whoever the new operator is will be able to negotiate if this would be approved and we would move forward whoever the new operator will be able to negotiate their own contract with nhra moving forward which is how it's essentially been so i just wanted to point that out because i know there have been some questions about the nhra contract so i wanted to give clarity on where we are on that point um, the second point is i know there was some desire that we want a full contract um, in front of us, a full signed contract. And what we've been able to do 
um, is come up with what draft contractual provisions would be. I think it's important to understand about this contract is you're talking about a complicated um, management and operating agreement along with a contract. And I've used the term, it, it would be negligent for me to throw together a contract in two weeks of this magnitude to put in front of this body and say, approve this. Um, it would not protect the city. I have an obligation to the governing body to make sure that we protect the city. And just to illustrate that, I mean, how I see this unfolding is that there would be terms that would be agreed on between whoever the new operator is in the city. Once those terms are agreed on, um, I talked to a uh, council from NHRA who said, give me the names of attorneys that specialize in this area. You're talking about a handful of attorneys. These are not, you know, we're leasing an apartment, <laughs> we're leasing a house. And as always, the devils are always in the details in those contracts. And I think that's part of the reason, I, I don't know, I wasn't here in 1988, but um, we just want to make sure that we get it right so the protections are in there for the city. And that's why putting something together in two weeks and giving it to you, um, it's, it's just not a possibility. But when we, looked at the, when we look at the draft contractual provisions, um, essentially, and again, these are drafts, this is a draft, and these are provisions that we've generally agreed on, would be an initial 10-year lease of the facility with the option of two um, five-year terms. The, there would be a $300,000 payment made to the city for that initial 10-year lease. Um, the operator would have the right of first refusal or purchase after the star bonds are paid off. So after the star bonds are paid off, they would have the right to purchase the facility. Um, Shelby would it make a $5 million five million dollar investment um, and be required to provide independent audits and make significant annual investments. So what we're talking about is that not waiting till year nine and have no investment, that there would be annual investments made, there would be audits um, to make sure those investments are being made. There would be performance obligations uh, and that we would have the ability um, to, for default cure and termination provisions, and those would all, all be in favor of the city in case there was some sort of default on the lease or those performance obligations. Property development, which has been public, we've talked about at all the meetings that Shelby envisions significant development in the property, convenience stores, commercial warehouses, restaurants, and hotels. Um, Shelby would have no obligation to assume any of the debts or obligations of Jayhawk Racing under the Memorandum of Understanding. If you would move forward, Jayhawk would be responsible for any vendor debts that are currently there that would be paid out of their payment, their $2.3 million payment. I think something that is important to this body that I actually underlined under paragraph 7, Shelby will not acquire a property interest outside of being a leasee. So in our current situation where we have somebody who is essentially has an operating agreement with the city um, that has also has a property interest, that, that would, we would not let that situation occur again. Uh, paragraph 8, again, along those lines, I think is important. No mortgages, liens, or any other encumbrances will be placed on the property associated with Heartland Park without written approval of Shelby and approval by a majority vote of the governing body because what I've heard a lot is how do these mortgages take place? So before any mortgages or liens would be, would be placed on the property, it would come before this body um, where a majority vote. Obviously, these are just terms that would be, um, the, the ultimate contingency is approval by this body, approval by the Department of Commerce and the city acquiring fee simple title. And then we just have the estimated 4.8 to 5.5 million of star bonds. So again, I want to be clear, I'm not presenting you with a finalized contract. I'm presenting you with general terms that have been discussed. Uh, the process of a contract from this point would be continued negotiations with Shelby, um, defining those terms further, and then having review by outside counsel and obviously um, whoever Shelby would want to contract with to review it. So that's. Um, essentially the work 
that's been done in the last two weeks since we've met. Uh, again, I would echo what the city manager said. We're all aware of this project. It's been well publicized and we've had several public meetings on it. If there are questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, we don't have a uh, formal presentation because we just did a two hour formal presentation, two weeks, and then um, two other meetings. And um, Chris Payne and Wes Carrillo are also here from Shelby in case you'd have any specific questions for them. Um, so I would stand for any questions or um, anything that would be needed. Are there questions for Mr. Sublette? Mrs. Ortiz? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to be a little bit here because I got a lot of, a lot of notes here. Um, Chad, um, you said it's been two weeks. It's actually been six months. Is that correct? I don't, I don't know what you mean by six months. Well, in December, we received four responses to the RFP that went out in December. Is that correct? Right. Who were they? Um, Mr. Gerber, if you could. That's MK Investments, um, Shelby, uh, Larry Sink, and IMDC, which was Mr. Farnham, I believe, were the four responses. I didn't believe Shelby was a part of that. Well, it was Monopoly Acquisitions, I think, was that. But it wasn't Shelby, correct? Well, Shelby is a subsidiary of Monopoly Acquisitions. So he's a spin-off, is what you're trying to say? He's an LLC associated with Monopoly Acquisitions. Okay. But that was done in December, right? That's when the RFPs went out, was in December. When did you get their responses? I believe it was February. If you, Councilwoman Ortiz, Mr. Mayor, if you give me a sec, I'll look through my notes. And sure, find absolutely, that absolutely. <clears throat> I get, Councilwoman, if we, we put the RFPs out, there was a time period, and Mr. Gerber can pull it up, but I think it was four to six weeks. Once we got the responses, we started meeting with all of the individual groups we did have conversations with each, with each of those groups. And from then, from that point, after those conversations, we put together a team to objectively look at criteria and make a determination about who that appropriate person would, who that appropriate entity would be. Those conversations, that process takes time. So that to say, we, we, we were not in a place six months ago to negotiate a contract. But but maybe maybe you've had longer than two weeks, am I correct? Well, we came to you, I believe, at the last meeting, um, we discussed an LOI, which is the first step after you have the conversations, you have a letter of intent of, these are some general outlines of what a contract would look like, then you sit down and you develop general contract points, and then you get into the details of negotiating the contract. But I believe, I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I, I feel like we've had longer than just the time that you're trying to say, here it is. Um, <clears throat> okay, does the city council get to approve the operating agreement? Because there's no agreement right now, correct? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Councilman Ortiz, absolutely. You would, you would sign off on the actual operating agreement at such time that that is brought forward. And when will that be? When it is negotiated. This is a highly complex deal, and I think one of the challenges that, that we're dealing with today is a contract that was done that was not in the best interest of the city. There's a significant amount of effort that will go into negotiating the contract, and there's not anybody on our staff who's qualified to get into the details of that contract. And there could be some there could be some significant expenses. Don't know what that is, haven't talked to people yet. But I think that it would, I, I understand that it would be better if we had a finalized contract at this particular point. And the only point, the only position that I can take is what we have is the best that we could have delivered within the time frame and the challenges that we had on this deal at this point. And while we, we think that it outlines the, the specific business points of the deal and all the rest of the contract negotiations, we'll talk about specific performance metrics it will talk about causes of default, 
how a cure would occur and what the ultimate levels of recourse would be on behalf of the city, specifically to protect the city. In terms of the economics of the deal, I think that we've outlined it as it is today. The further contracts on our behalf is going to protect the city's interest going forward. But didn't we know that months ago? We, we were not in a position to do that. We could, we could and, I, and I respect the, what you're saying in answer, but we would not have been in a position from a resource perspective to negotiate this contract beyond where we're at today in that we would have been asking the other party to, to commit to significant funds from resource. We would be committing to significant funds resources, not knowing whether we would have a, a deal or not. So um, I, I think that this is something that we've worked diligently at to bring you the best information possible. But we do understand, especially based on the comments that have been made by members of this body previously, that, it, that what we're bringing may not be enough. We hope that's not the case. We think that we have a viable operator um, and, and potential partner for the city. Uh, but given where we're at today, we think that this is as far as we can go prior to the action we're asking you to take today. So the bottom line is we don't know what it's going to be, right? Well, I, I don't, Mr. Mayor and Councilman Ortiz, I don't think that that's, that's fair. I think we know what the business points are and we know what the economics of the deal are. And the situation is as we negotiate a contract, we'll be talking about specific performance and how those defaults and recourses would work through the through the deal. That's really the critical elements going forward. I, I appreciate I appreciate the meetings. I really do. I heard from racers, I heard from elderlies, I heard from workers, I heard from out of towners, I heard from citizens of Topeka. My phone has rang off the wall weekend. I spent hours on the phone. I don't know about you guys, but I spent hours on the phone. I even left my house to get away from this one conversation. So, and, and I had people that work at the track, and I had people that, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I appreciate all the information that I, I was given. One thing stood out to me, though, at, at one of those meetings is, this is an estimated amount. Is that correct? We don't even have the official amount or the final amount. It's an estimated amount of what you're asking us to approve on the star bonds. The, if I may, Mayor. Councilwoman, um, within the MOU that this body approved, um, the range is 4.8 to 5.5 million dollars. Like many bonds that we bring in front of you, if you recall the night of the bonds, we change what the amount is depending on the interest. What we know as of right now is that, and it was in the it was in the newspaper, and um, we sent it out that it's sitting at um, 5.5 for two million dollars right now. Uh, we estimate that it would, if this were to go to July 1st, you'd be looking at um, 5.492, I believe is the number, of well, as interest accumulates. So um, it's within the range that was approved by this body of 4.8 to 5.5 million dollars. What is the estimate amount? That's the amount that was approved approved by this, in the MOU, by this body was um, an estimated amount between 4.8 and 5.5 million dollars. If we think of it as 5.5 million is the cap of what the city manager is legally obligated because the MOU was approved to request from this body, the cap would be 5.5 million dollars. Is Walmart in or Walmart out? Walmart is physically in the district. Their revenues are not. Um, collected as part of the expanded district. And I believe Mr. Gerber's provided some information previously on um, how that, how the, uh, the increment works with Walmart in and Walmart out. But if you'd like more information on that. No, I'm just asking a question. Yeah. Walmart's not in, right? Yeah, they're, 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 like their, they're, revenue, their revenues are not their in. Their revenue's not in. Their sales they're, taxes are not right, in. Right, right. Um, So what you're asking me to do tonight is you're asking me to approve the Star Bond District to expand it, correct? We're asking for you to grant the city manager the authority to request Star Bonds from the Department of Commerce to continue along this path. This will come back in front of you again. Um, 
to approve the final sale of the star bonds. And I'm looking at Mr. Gerber mm -hmm. to make sure that, <clears throat> that I've got that correct. With the 3.3% interest rate. Uh, Mrs. Ortiz, Mr. Mayor, as with any bond sale that we have, we come back to the council the, the night of the day that we sell the bonds. So we typically would sell the bonds in the morning, then we'd come back to you for that final approval, yes. So you're asking me to approve something, but I don't know what the operator is going to do. I don't know any of those details, but you want me to approve the money in this pool over here and on good faith say, this this is what's going to happen and we don't have a contract not even a contingency contract but that's what you're asking me to do we, and if I may mr. mayor what we've done is put this resolution in front of you to make a determination of this body if they want to move forward with this project the numbers in this resolution are the same numbers that were in the MOU when it was approved 4.8 <coughs> 5.5 million dollars um, so again this is a step we wanted I believe this body to weigh in on if they want this to move forward or not move forward and that's simply what this resolution does how can Walmart be in the district but their revenues not um, in conversations with the Department of Commerce and Brandon can talk about exactly how the breakdown is, but they gather um, the sales tax revenue, all of it in the district, and so they would simply remove whatever that is from Walmart and then distribute distribute it to the uh, to the city. Um, in conversations with the with council from the Department of Commerce. Um, they believe they have administrative authority to do that. And if you go back to the legislative post audit, um, they, they said specifically that the Department of Commerce has wide latitude when it comes to um, devising the district and um, the star bonds in general. That's the department that oversees that. So the state and then you talked to, you guys have made that agreement? Who made that agreement? Or, or is there an agreement that be made? Or how does that work? Mr. City Manager. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Councilman Ortiz. I, I, so just to give sort of a flashback into the history of that, when we looked at it and the first time that it was mentioned that the Walmart was not included, it was certainly an area of concern for ours. And we went down and I talked to the Cabinet Secretary. and He was reticent to include uh, Walmart into that conversation. And, and uh, I walked back a little bit disappointed that they didn't want to include the Walmart into that particular district. Um, when I got back and I talked to the financial team, they actually indicated that was in the best interest of the city. And the way that the, the, way that the revenues are determined, um, and, and I'm way out of my area of expertise, so I'm going to have to look at Doug pretty quick here, but we used to have two Walmarts in the community. And they, com they, they, they combined, compiled all of the, all of the funds and they distributed it between the two between the two Walmart facilities, and so that that amount was determined based on the average between the two the two Walmarts. There's now five Walmarts in the community, and they still do the same thing where they determine it based on based on the five. I'm not sure how how much information we we can talk about or share on that particular thing because we can't indicate what a per, what an individual um, location's sales tax was, but. Um, it is our understanding and it is our belief and it makes us feel better uh, about not having Walmart that that the average of the sales tax collected in Walmart it would have been had a negative impact on us it would have been included into the district but I think the more important that notwithstanding it was very clear that that in conversations with the cabinet secretary that they did not want to include um, that Walmart revenue into into this particular deal um, it was something that we desired uh, in retrospect we, we probably should have um, had the map um, adjusted and and specifically excluded that and it's something that that did not occur and uh, but that's why we are where we're at who's we we would include the negotiating team on the city our lawyers that we talked to 
and the cabinet and the the folks um, at the Commerce Department. We were never told that. Is that correct? I think that we did specifically discuss Walmart at the at the time, but not being included because when we presented the revenue streams that would be generated, it did not include Walmart in that list. So I don't think there's ever been an intent not to include that information. My <coughs> recollection is it was it was discussed um, very early on that Walmart was never included in the revenue streams. It's not a situation where it was approved with it in, and we then later took it out. It has never been in. So can anybody else be taken out of the district then? I do not believe that they can. So you don't know? I yeah. One, once the district, the district is established, it's the district. So if this moves forward, everybody approves it, the district at that point becomes solidified as long as Heartland Park continues to operate as a racing facility as defined by the statute from, I think it's 2005. Um, and just to go back on, because people have asked, well, can you tell us the exact numbers of certain retailers within the district? Um, no, that, that would be a violation of state law. Brandon Kaufman had to sign an affidavit not to disclose those numbers, just to get the numbers from Department of Revenue of individual retailers. So that is something that cannot be disclosed. And again, Brandon had to sign a non-disclosure affidavit um, when he got those numbers so that we could look at them. Okay, so the races are going, they're, they're gonna happen, right? Am I correct? As, as far as I know, yes, I talked to um, counsel from the NHRA yesterday. Um, she, she actually called me Saturday and said they had a sign agreement. Uh, essentially, the NHRA is fronting all the costs. Uh, they are doing the preparation. They have hired people that are out there working at the track right now. The races are going to happen. Um, if you think about it as NHRA has complete access to the facility from now until it's done to do everything that needs to happen from marketing to selling tickets to getting that place ready um, to conducting the race. And That's my understanding. Who is the current operator? Um, Jayhawk Racing still has the management and operation agreement at this point in time. Do we know what improvements were made with our last monies for the track? The when you say last, there was a $750,000 that was for the resurfacing of the track. And I don't, Doug may have it, but the $5 million in GO bonds, um, I don't have the exact. Because I've had people tell me that no improvements were made with that money on the track. And that's why I'm asking. I believe Mr. Gerber has the last audit that could answer some of those questions. Every year there's a public audit that lists all the improvements that are made that is publicly available and released on a Starbone project. Mr. Mayor, Ms. Ortiz, uh, I can run through a number of projects that are listed in the annual report that is filed from the city to the Department of Commerce. Does report. that total the amount of money that we gave them to make improvements? Can you tell me that? Yes. For, for example, it goes through, <clears throat> excuse me, improvements to the drag race and asphalt replacement of $2.2 million. Uh, repair and resurface all asphalt and pit areas, about 45, 45 acres, $2.3 million. Um, garages for competitors, 819000 So we can, I, I can give you a laundry list of all of the projects, but... Um, we do have those listed in a report that we submit to the Department of Commerce every year. And that's from the operator? From the city of Topeka. From the city of Topeka. Okay. Yes. Um, I am going to say this. This is very complicated. I do agree with you, um, the city attorney. And the devil is in the details. And I won't be approving this. But what I'd like to do is I would like to, because the races are going, I'd like to make a motion to defer till after the city manager provides an agreement with the operator. That's my motion, Mr. Mayor. It's been moved to defer action on this. Uh, usually we state a time. Uh, we defer for so many weeks or for Well, the a time, time until the city manager provides an agreement with the operator. So I, I don't know if that would be three months. I could say three months. I could say six months. We've had the RFPs for a while, so I'll say six months. Mr. Mayor, I, I can't provide a, a time frame. Um, 
but I will work expeditiously. Do you think it would be less than <clears throat> six months? Mr. Mr. Mayor and Council, I, I, I haven't talked to any it's, it's difficult. attorneys. Okay. I haven't engaged anybody who's an expert in this particular okay. thing. Um, my experience in the past is they can take a very long time. Okay. This is, and I usually we do state a date. So May. Well, if we did June, say six months, months and, and they came back earlier than that, that would that would be great. But I, as for me as a council member, I want to see an operating. I want to see what we're approving to, and 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 I think <clears throat> that's important to me now. I was here before. And um, I don't know if that's what's brought us to this point, but it's important to me to know the details on who's paying for what. And that's why I, would, I made that motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay. I have six months is November. Uh, we would say November 5 or the appropriate council meeting uh, closest to that, I think, is what the, is normal, the process that we state a specific date when we defer. Uh, is there a second? Councilman Schwartz, Councilwoman Schwartz seconds. Discussion, um, Mr. Harmon. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Colsner, Mistress of Blood, if, um, if this motion passes and you are directed to continue developing a contract with, uh, with an operator, I think, Mr. Sublet, you indicated this is a fairly specialized area of the law and that we would have to, I assume, have to secure outside counsel to uh, procure the drafting and the negotiation. Are you in a position to give us an estimate of the legal costs to prepare such an operating agreement to bring back before the council? No, I, can, I cannot give you, it would, it would be a guess at this point. But, if I may, Your Honor, but it would require act, uh, securing outside counsel? Yes, 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 sir, it would. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Your okay. Honor. Uh, Councilman Schwab. My understanding is that as of July, we would need to issue um, 5.9, I'm sorry, 5.492. Yeah. Sorry. So putting this off until November will only accumulate more bonds that we would have to issue. I am not in favor of this motion. Okay, the discussion. Um, Councilwoman Clare. Um, thank you. Mr. Sublet, um, just out of curiosity, who was on the team that looked at the RFPs? Um, there were several people that looked at them. It was, what I would say is the core term was Mr. Gerber, um, the city manager, myself, uh, Jay Euler, who's our procurement director. Uh, that, that would be the core members of the team. Councilman Hiller, Deputy Mayor Hiller. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if I understand correctly from what was said earlier, not only do we have the money issue with these bonds, the, the old debt continuing to accumulate rapidly um, if we put this off, but also um, it's kind of whatever that cost <coughs> is, sounds like it will be high, that it is pointless for either party, Shelby Inc. or the city, to spend any money taking the, this agreement any farther until everybody knows that those bonds would be out there, which means we need to make the approval tonight, and then the state needs to say, yes, it's okay, and we need to get them moving so everybody knows there's something to talk about. So it is sort of a catch-22, I understand. Um, um, I can't support this because of that because it just doesn't work. I do have a question, though, because I really appreciate the fact that Shelby is here, that the city staff has done this much work, that Shelby is here, and we and the public have had a chance to meet them. And as far as I've heard, it has all been favorable. And I personally am relieved, as well as a little bit excited, as much as I'll let myself be. Um, <coughs> and I understand Councilwoman Ortiz, Ortiz's concern that we have at least some fundamentals of, of this contract ready. And I appreciate what you brought tonight. My question then would be, um, with it at this juncture, is it 
uh, this really is just a question, is it appropriate or inappropriate if we were to approve those bonds contingent on the, the draft moving forward as is? Or if we didn't do that, if the fact that this draft had been presented to us and discussed tonight, would that be strong enough to carry it forward in effect contingent on this particular draft? I'm not sure what you're asking. There. Well, <laughs> you know, we are concerned about this contract and, right. and concerned about it being Shelby. And so I understand Councilwoman Ortiz's concern about doing something that's just open-ended and only approving the bonds. So the question is, could we approve moving forward with the bonds contingent on this draft riding with it, however that would be phrased? Or if we didn't include that contingency in the motion and left the motion simple just to approve that resolution, would the fact that this draft had been presented tonight be almost the same as if we had voted in as a contingency? Because it's on the record and because it's here. No, I, I think, and I know this isn't the answer everybody wants to hear, but I think these are two separate issues. I think it's, do you want to, does this body want to move forward with this plan? And if they do, in the coming weeks, we will continue to work with Shelby. And remember, there's there's steps beyond this. Once we, if this body approves this, it goes to the Department of Commerce, it goes to the Attorney General. Um, I think it's 30 to 45 days is what I've been told before bonds would be issued would be issued and in that time frame we will continue discussions with Shelby and move forward but I don't think I mean what you have in front of you is, is not a legally binding signed enforceable document it's just terms that we've generally agreed to and I wouldn't want to mislead this body or anybody in, in saying that it's anything other than that okay we're now we're discussing the motion to defer action on the ordinance uh, for six months, so approximately uh, November 5. Councilman Shum. Oh, one thing that we don't want to forget here is we're not the only party. Core First is involved in this. They have graciously extended us out since February 1st to have ask a bank not to foreclose on property that's legally theirs for another six months is a bad business practice and not a precedent that I think any of us would be comfortable setting at this council tonight. So again, I would ask that we vote down the current motion asking for a delay. Okay, thank you. Is there other discussion? Um, Councilwoman Schwartz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The reason I seconded this was to have the discussion because I think we need to, to always remember that if you second something, there is discussion that you can talk about whether it is a good motion or not. Um, I don't agree that we had enough public input at the public meetings um, I, you know, I think there were maybe, what, 75 at one. I don't know how many were at the second one. But out of 128,000 people, I really don't think we had the public input. And when Celia made the motion, I thought, well, maybe we could garner more public input in that six months because <laughs> we really haven't gotten the public input. But I do agree with Councilman Shum that it will probably uh, prolong it and there will be an increase in the fees that we, we would have to collect. So. I will not support it either. Is there other discussion on the uh, amendment, uh, Councilman Jensen? I would also remind everyone that there's a significant economic impact that Heartland Park provides to the community in terms of other small businesses that would also be negatively affected. Um, you know, even if a number is half of the estimated $53 million, that is still a significant amount of money that is imported to our community. And I think we need to be cognizant of that in our discussions and decisions. Thank you. For other discussion, uh, Councilman Ortiz. Thank you, and I and I appreciate that. I, I do want to be a good business person on behalf of the city. What is the interest rate um, on Core First? What is their interest rate? The interest rate on the current loans is eighteen percent. Eighteen percent. Eighteen percent. That's that's the interest rate, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Our good buddies, Core First, are hometown but and I like I like core first I, I you know but anyway um I just wanted to bring that out uh, they've been waiting since February for us to do something and they've been waiting and I think they're waiting patiently they can foreclose we did hear from the city manager we did hear from the city attorney that 
we've got to hire somebody. So this is, it's, it's, um, it's not going to be an easy task. It's not going to be an overnight task. And um, I support this and hopefully that they won't take six months to come back. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Council. I just wanted to clarify, we have to, we have to investigate and evaluate. We may be able to do it in house. I don't, we don't have anybody on staff right now, but there may be ways to do this. I, I don't know what it is, so I don't want to be put into a position of saying how we're going to do this. I've just been through some before and they're very complicated and we will come back with a plan as to how to do it and we're, and we're addressing it expeditiously at this particular point. Okay. Is there other discussion on the amendment? Councilman Ortiz? I think what concerns me, city manager, is Chad said we don't have anybody to do it. We'd have to go out and we'd have to hire somebody and I hear that loud and clear, and I think that we probably would. And, Thank you. And Mayor Council, I agree that it is a high probability, but I really hate talking about what we're going to do before we've investigated all the opportunities. Okay. Seeing no other discussion, all those in favor of the motion to defer action on the uh, resolution, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. I vote no. We have nine no, Ms. Ortiz voting yes. Okay, uh, nine having voted no, the um, uh, amendment is defeated. Um, we're back on discussion on the resolution and recognize uh, Councilwoman Schwartz. Thank you, Your Honor. I learned something I didn't know about HPT yesterday from one of my constituents. It leads me to believe that I had been misled from the beginning. My recollection is that staff said if the star bond expansion was not made, the city would have to pay off the $10.6 million debt by increasing property taxes. In other words, the star bond district ended and the bonds would have to be paid immediately. I found out that is not true because with the star bond district in Wyandotte County, the property became private, which was Nebraska Furniture Mart and Cabela's, and the sales tax in the bond district continues to pay off the bonds. So if this resolution fails, although the HPT bond district doesn't generate enough to pay for it, the amount being paid will continue. What is that amount? I want to be Mr. Mayor. We we never said that. We've always said that at we've always said that we would have the continuing debt service, and that's what we're addressing. But you can go ahead and give the bond amounts. Uh, Councilwoman Shorts, you're you're asking for the current debt as well as the bond amounts going the forward. Payment. The payment that the current bond district now pays towards the 10.6 million that was the debt in 2006. Annual debt service. Thank you. So we anticipate in 2015, for example, that our debt service payments will be approximately $1 million. And I'll give you the caveat that I always do. I'm talking in round numbers. Okay. Uh, we anticipate, based on the most recent numbers we have, that that district generates 200,000. The current district. The current district, okay. yes. Okay, so it generates how much? Approximately 200,000. 200,000, okay. So could those payments then, if this resolution fails, be drawn from another source, say the half cent sales tax that passed, um, or money that goes to economic development that was recommended at the meeting, or even the public safety budget that we learned is 12 million more per year? I mean, could we pay for it out of the budget somewhere? So, Mrs. Swartz, if I understand your question, we, of course, those debt service payments do come out of the budget right now. Okay. They come out of our debt service fund, which is a fund, uh, has some, reven some revenue sources besides property tax, such as the Star Bond District funds, but is primarily a property tax-based fund. So whether it comes from the debt service fund or the general fund property tax levy, it's robbing Peter to pay Paul sort of thing. Okay, but it, it could be. I, I would defer to the, the city attorney as to whether or not the half cent sales tax or other funds could be used to pay for it. Okay. The, excuse me, the half cent sales tax, um, I don't have the ballot language in front of me, but it has to be spent on those projects that were listed out in the half cent sales tax. And I think one of the things that we've said continuously, and I know I've heard the city manager say continuously is, you know, we'll, f we'll find a way to address this. If, if this body decides this isn't the direction to go, that we'll find a way to address this, this debt service issue. Um, that, you know, what, what that is, 
I won't be here, but um, <laughs> that you know there will be a way to address this debt service issue going forward. We said that over and over and over again. So when somebody says, "I feel like I've been misled," I mean, I've heard the statement made over and over and over again. We'll find a way to address this debt service problem if this body doesn't approve this moving forward. Well, to clarify, if I may, I was led, I mean, I thought when we said we had a $10.6 million debt to pay off, that we would have to pay that and the bond district would go away. And so I, I found out something different. But now that you've kind of clarified it, I have one more question, then I'm going to let other people, because I have a lot of questions. Um, but another point is, if the city retains ownership of the property, then Heartland Park and everything that is developed out there will remain off the property tax rolls. That is why the best course may be to try to broker a sale or let CORE first take title and sell it. Um, and I've heard that there's two interested parties. So is that true that if it becomes private par property and the convenience store comes in and other development happens, that there's property tax money that the city would be collecting? But if the city continues to own the land, we will not collect property tax. Is that true? Uh, Councilwoman Schwartz, Mr. Mary, that, that is accurate. Um, and each city properties are exempt from taxes, so. Okay. From, from, from property That's taxes. From question property question taxes, thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, Councilman Shum. Just to clarify, because we've, we've gone off track just a little bit. Um, City Attorney, my understanding is the two weeks you were referring to at the beginning was simply the two-week period from when Councilwoman Ortiz requested some sort of contract. Specifically, she requested a signed contract. And that is the time frame that you're using the two weeks to refer to since the last City Council meeting. Yes, Council. Thank you. All right. Are there other um, discussion items, other questions for Mr. Sublet, Councilwoman Ortiz? Did we ever find the date that the RFPs came in for this, Mr. Mayor? Mr. Or, um, Mr. Gerber? Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilwoman Ortiz, the, those RFPs came in on December 12th. And uh, I'm sorry, would you speak louder? We yes. have trouble hearing you. <clears throat> those RFPs came in on December 12th, 2014. And looking uh, back at the response from uh, Shelby, it was responded to under Shelby, Shelby Development. Okay. If there is other, other discussion, um, and actually we'll, we'll have our, the council members, the opportunity to ask questions, Mr. Sublet, what you're in the process for doing right now, and then we will go to public comment and then come back to the council. Um, Deputy Mayor Hiller. I wanted to follow up on, on two of Councilwoman Schwartz's questions because I think there were, <clears throat> she was leading into some things that were raised in the public hearings or that I've gotten in emails that, that I think we, we maybe should clarify. One, about the extension of the Starbond District. I think um, Mr. Gerber has laid out that our bill would be about a million dollars next year. And, and if the racetrack were operating as it had been recently, it would generate 200000 a year. What I recall in our earlier discussions was that, of course, if the racetrack went dark, there would be nothing. So it has to be operating even at that low level that it was to contribute even 200000 toward it. And one of the things that we talked about back then, and on and off through this time is that often when something goes dark, it stays dark for a long time. It doesn't come back right away. And so we would not have that revenue for a while. And then I've asked this question too, so correct me if I'm wrong, anybody down the line, but my understanding was that, that the Starbond, at a certain <coughs> point, if, it, if the track didn't resume and it wasn't racing, it, the state would call the bonds because the star bonds are only for racing. So it would have to come back to life as a racing entity at, at some point fairly soon for the star bonds to to continue otherwise they they could be owed in full is that correct gentlemen well, the, mayor mm -hmm. and and let me if i may mr mayor sure. councilwoman i think what your suggestion was a scenario where it's foreclosed <clears throat> on it's not operating as as correct. anything what would the state's reaction to that be correct they would they they could and it would be up to them. They could close down the current star bond district, but we still have the same debt service schedule on Correct. the star bonds throughout the next 10 years. 
So I just I wanted to clarify that the other point that was suggested by a gentleman, maybe here or and or in hearings, was this million dollars uh, that a year paid out of the half cent sales tax. My understanding was that that a gentleman's suggestion was to use it out of the economic development side of the half cent <laughs> sales tax. And when I asked about that, I was advised that since that would just be paying off debt and nothing that was being developed, that that was not a possibility. Uh, could you c confirm or correct that? Oh, I'll jump in on that. Thank you. Uh, Mayor and Con or Deputy Mayor Hiller. Yeah, it, it definitely is would be allowed under the ballot language under economic development. It's not a conversation that has really occurred. Um, this body sits as as one of the a, a majority of that of the of the JDO that would have to, have to approve that. I think that there is a philosophical discussion that would have to be had, but it it, it it wasn't the focus of this discussion and it it's an idea and I'm not weighing in whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. It's not just it just hasn't been discussed and evaluated um, as a as a discussion point up to this point. Okay. But Thank it is you. an it is an alternative just as there and we've said this from the beginning. I know I sound I sounded like I was stopping. Um, we've always said from the beginning there are other ways of doing this. It was our objective to come back with the alternative that we felt was in the long-term best interest of this community. We do not need this to happen for us to go forward as a community. It's just a plan that this body approved overwhelmingly in Jul August? June. June of, of last year. And we have proceeded according to the MOU. And we're at that point where we are going to proceed sp consistent with how we've proceeded in the past. But we understand it's, and as I said at the beginning, we started a long time ago. A lot of things have, have happened. A lot of things have been said, some true, some not, some rumor, some not, some accusatory, some not. But we, and I'll say you as a body, have an opportunity to make a decision this evening as to whether to proceed or not. From our perspective, we will proceed. We will operate the city in the long-term best interest economically and all other uh, manners. Councilman Schwartz. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, in response to the going dark, there is an alternative that Core First could foreclose and it could be bought. And then the races could happen next year. And for all we know, it could even generate more than $200,000 in payment for the current $10.6 million that we owe. And I don't agree that this is the best option of committing $16 million that the city is going to commit um, additionally. So I am, I'm not going to support this. And I, I, I surveyed my own district. It came back three to one against. And I want to read some of the comments. Remember the old adage, two wrongs don't make a right. I agree with the statement. It would have been helpful to have some kind of a document in hand with a company intending to take over the track before obligating the city to additional star bonds. I know personally that Harlan Park has never been in the black. Why spend more money on something that has never paid its way? Please vote to stop this. I know the owner and he's never made a profit. Another one was, be skeptical about anything anyone advocates the city claim. Keep in mind, we are in this mess because of a prior city council approved a deal set up by and promoted by the city staff. I am willing to stipulate members of that prior city council are good people. They just got misled by staff. I believe you are a good person. Please try to not get misled. And then one constituent wrote about the actual amount of money that was put into by Jayhawk Racing. And I, I'm questioning that because was it only 216,000 that Jayhawk Racing put in, and they still owe 6.8? Well, they had a an equity contribution of 6.8. Why would the city advance another 2.3 million without the required equity contribution being made? When the transaction is done, does Jayhawk Racing get a release from the required equity of the 6.8 million? This seems unbelievable that he has only paid 216,000 of the 6.8 million he owes and is getting a 2.3 million in a payoff. So those were the comments, and that's my final question. Do you want to respond, do you want to respond in some manner to the question? 
Mrs. Schwartz, Mr. Mayor, I think the question is, has he, has Jayhawk only contributed right. 216,000? Right. Yes, as of the last audit, which we did, on it, we do them on a yearly basis. The last one was last July, July of 2014. Uh, it showed uh, verified contributions of 214,000. For the year. Is that a year? Ever. Ever. Or I think she's asking total. Yeah. She's Ever. asking for the total, total. amount. Total. Yes. It's 214,000 yes. total. Yes. Out of 6.8 million that he okay. agreed to. All right. Okay. Are there other questions, hey, Mr. Cohen? Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Um, I believe, as one of the newer members here, I kind of can say, why is this Heartland Park situation so confusing? I believe, well, our city manager said today that this is a complex deal and has several legal and financial potentials. Business deals need to be airtight, but should be easy to understand. Who can possibly make sense of this situation with so many wheels and cogs in play? Those of us who recently walked our districts learned something. The perception of the voting public think we do not know what we're doing and their tax, tax dollars are being wasted. For a time, we were giving out new information each week. And we need to be straightforward with the public, and that's why we are elected. This situation has crippled this city and the city council. And we haven't been able to get back to the real city business, such as fixing our streets, because we're plagued with making decisions like this. Since the S&P raised our credit rate rating the other day, let me speak a moment about um, debt. I haven't seen a cash flow or a profit and loss statement from the track and don't know how we can loan or borrow money to somebody without seeing the financials for this facility. Someone knew about the water utility bill situation way before it was brought to this council. And I don't see how the city can leave a utility turned on when they were so far behind. The voters don't get that preferential treatment. I also had no idea that the taxpayers had been carrying millions of dollars in debt on behalf of the current owners for the last few years. I haven't had a chance to get to know all of my colleagues yet outside of this venue, but does anyone have banking experience or able to underwrite this type of loan or this type of um, credit? Who's gonna service this debt? It appears Core First isn't even doing it now. It's obvious that the rates track hasn't been performing or meeting expectations for quite some time. So who's gonna meet with the new operators to make sure they're gonna make good on their promises? Heartland Park is a business and they are in a business of providing entertainment. And does the city have a business plan for running that? Does the city have a plan for operating it? Was there a prospectus created to show investors and sponsors the sustainability of the track? Until today, I haven't heard um, about any performance standards or a performance bond but what happens if the new operator doesn't live up to their expectations? We would need to be able to seize this bond to pay off their creditors and move on. I also haven't heard about key man insurance. The new operator is phys if, if the new operator is physically unable to run the day-to-day -day operations of the track, key man insurance kicks in and covers any cost to replace that key man. Um, have we even talked to Core First Bank about someone, including the city, purchasing this track in foreclosure? We could buy it for a significant savings, have a clear title, and put it up for sale. Last week, I overheard one of my colleagues speaking to Mr. Payne after one of the town hall meetings where he expressed interest in buying the track if this resolution is not approved. Why is this option not on the top of the table? Normally, a business owner has some skin in the game, but the current option seems to pass a lot of risk to the taxpayer. 
in my opinion, the city shouldn't go down this road of bailing out a failed business. It would set a precedent for any entity in the entertainment business to come to Topeka because we will bail them out if they fail. If we had this mindset many years ago, we would still be subsidizing Joyland Amusement Park. And think about that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Do you want to make any comments in response or just this is more of a statement that we're making at this point? Okay. Yeah. All right. Are there other comments before we go to public hearing? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I didn't see your hand. No. Councilman Jensen. Uh, I would just like to, to say that most of the comments and the issues we've had are because of the past operator. Um, I would not support this if the past operator was still going to operate it. In fact, I'm really unsure why that was done in the recent past. Um, all of that information is good information, but it doesn't apply to the new team that wants to run it. They're going to make significant changes. They've talked about them. We have some preliminary documentation showing they're going to do that. So to hold them to prior failures, I think is unfair. And we're not getting an accurate portrayal of what our options are in the future. Um, thank you. Other comments? OK, we will then go to um, our public comment. We have a number of people who have signed up for com public comment. Uh, so you're, and we'll call two names so that you will know who is the next person to be coming up and possibly even get out of the aisle if you're sitting in the middle so that we can move along as rapidly as possible. Uh, you, as you know, you have four minutes. This is where you are making a statement to the council. It is not a time to engage in question and answer or, or discussion. Uh, and you are speaking to the entire council rather than any individuals. 